Good morning. And I'm a little bit late to the party on this one because, well, I was a little bit ill last week and I also had some painting to do in the house and stuff. So I didn't get round to doing some of the videos I wanted to do. And I, I was going to leave this one, but the, the more it went on, the more we heard, the, the more I felt that I, I had to say something. And, you know, what I'm talking about here is the Diablo debacle. And, you know, the announcement and everything that came as a result of the announcement and what it made me feel about the way the games industry and specifically games journalism has a kind of disconnect with fans and with gamers. You know, the initial announcement was bloody terrible, let's be honest, and gamers weren't happy, even in the audience. And you wouldn't normally expect that because the people in audiences are usually the people who are the most invested in a game. So for them to not be happy, well, <laughs> you know, you've got a problem on your hands. And, you know, the metaphor I would use would be, you know, you've gone in for a burger into a restaurant and, and you know, you wanted a, a nice burger. And instead of getting a burger, well, you've ended up with a shit sandwich. And it seems to me that that's how <laughs> the, the people in the audience and, you know, further afield as well, fans of the game generally felt. But the gaming press immediately went after entitled gamers, you know, at attacking their audience. <laughs> they didn't seem to want to look into why gamers were annoyed. And that was something that really struck me. We had this announcement and it was a, a mobile game and, and, a, and a mobile game with all the baggage that that brings. The press may try to skirt around the issue for whatever reason, but the fact is that most mobile games are microtransaction infested garbage designed to siphon money from gamers' wallets. And, you know, OK, look, I, I know there are exceptions there and there are some good mobile games, but I tend to steer clear of mobile games on the whole because of that reason. Yeah, and, and just look at what's been done to other beloved franchises like Dungeon Keeper. And, and you look at that and you can see why gamers might be concerned. It's not difficult to understand that. So the fact that the gaming press can see that that might be a problem and that there might be good reasons for it being a problem, well, that says a lot about the gaming press. That's the way I see it anyway. Then there's the fact that Diablo Immortal is being developed in partnership with NetEase, a Chinese company known for producing games that are all about pay to win and microtransactions. And, you know, if you look into this a little bit, you can see that Chinese culture is apparently quite happy to embrace gambling mechanics in games. So NetEase is doing extremely well in China. But is that a good reason to bring them in to develop? A Diablo game? Most Diablo fans, it seems, think not. And I'd have to side with them on this. I, I'm not a Diablo fan. It's a game that's kind of passed me by. But if someone took a, a, a game that I love, say something like Doom that I've been playing for years of the, you know, on the various iterations of the game or something like Half-Life, another game that I love, and, and and they took that and turned that into a loot box infested pay to win mobile game. Well, I might be a little bit pissed off, too. And, you know, look, it, it may not have microtransactions. It may not have pay to win mechanics. But uh, would you bet against it? Because I certainly wouldn't. So, you know, fans have genuine concerns here and the press seem to be ignoring them. But it gets even worse. Apparently Diablo Immortal isn't even a new game. It looks like it may be a reskin. Uh, you know, a reskin specifically of an already existing NetEase game called, I think, Crusaders of Light. And if I'm wrong on that, please correct me because I'm not really that familiar with NetEase games, not having ever played any of them. I just know a little bit from what I've done for the research for this video. Now, Blizzard say that the game has been made from the ground up. And OK, well, maybe that is the case. Maybe it's not a reskin. But whatever is the case, it is a NetEase game and it looks and 
plays like Anetti's game. And, and you know, some people have gone online and, and put up videos to show the two games next to each other. And they do look very, very similar. Crusaders of Light and Diablo Immortal. They look very, very similar. And, and so, as I say, I keep repeating this, but there's genuine concerns here. <laughs> a great many news outlets have tried to pour scorn on gamers for being concerned. But why shouldn't gamers be concerned? After all, Blizzard wants them to part with their money for this game. A game which gamers never asked for and never wanted. If Blizzard want them to accept it, they need to convince the gamers of its worth. That's the bottom line. We don't have to buy these games. You know, it's, it's not on us to, to just go out and buy them because they're putting these things out there and we should go and buy them to, you know, put money in their pockets. They have to convince us that they're worth buying. You know, just in case the gaming press forgot, let me remind them of something. Gamers, just like any other consumer, are entitled to not like a product or to be wary about a new product before it comes out. In that sense, gamers are entitled. Yeah, we're entitled. Literally. We have every right to complain. We are entitled to complain. We're entitled not to like something. But that isn't being entitled. Not in the way some, or as I say, many of the articles would have you believe. Gamers aren't being entitled when they are exercising their right as consumers. And that's all they are doing. They're merely exercising their rights as customers and the gaming press would do well to remember that. And OK, look, I know some gamers go over the top. They always have and they always will. But they're not the people we should be listening to here. There are plenty of people who have genuine concerns and they should be listened to. But here's the real problem. When I went looking for articles on this subject, I found page after page of gaming press articles talking about entitled gamers and whining gamers. Not one article actually tried to properly address the concerns of the gamers, the customers. When the gamers were actually voicing some genuine concerns, they were just ignored and brushed aside as if they were whiny little children. And look, I, I already touched on this in my video about Nintendo's online service and, and the way, you know, that's been spun by certain outlets. But I think this debacle brings the problem up front and centre. The problem's this. The gaming press, on the whole, is far too cosy with the gaming industry. Whenever something new is announced, they tend to jump on board shouting about how great it'll be and any criticism is always muted or tempered. And I, I can understand that to some extent. They don't want to piss people off and they want to get review copies and all the rest of it. But what's the point of getting review copies if you're not doing genuine reviews and you're not doing genuine journalism? What's the point? There, there is no point. At, at that particular juncture, you cease to have a purpose. And that's what we're seeing here, as far as I can see. And, and you know, we see this difference between gamers and the press in the differences in things like Metacritic scores, you know, which are often, you know, way apart from one another. And, and one group must be right and one group must be wrong. Or, you know, maybe somewhere in the middle. I don't know. But, th but you can't have the critics and the fans being at arm's length all the time. There have to, has to be some meeting of minds at some point. You know, we, we see YouTubers and bloggers have completely different viewpoints and when compared to their journalistic counterparts. And, you know, we see differences in the attitudes towards stories coming out of the gaming industry. Whether true or not, games journalism is seen to always be on the side of the gaming industry. And that, that, that's really not healthy. Whether it's true or whether it's a perception, it's not healthy. 
you know, whenever there's a, a butting of heads between the industry and gamers, we hear from the, the press that gamers should stop moaning. They should be pleased with what they're given. After all, these developers are working themselves into the ground to cater for every whim of these talentless, thankless nobodies who hate women and gays and live in their mum's basement wanking over hentai. You know, that, that's the image we get of gamers from the press. The press that is supposed to represent us. The, the press that is supposed to, in, in effect, make sure that we get decent products and to look at the products and be critical and be fair, but be critical. And we see very little of that. What we see is the press constantly going after their readers. The people who, you know, want to find out about games, want to know about games. You know, and we've all got something in common here. We all love games. But for the press to paint gamers in this way, to make us out to all be kind of knuckle-dragging, ditch-dwelling idiots, it's just not true, is it? But hey, you know, never let the truth get in the way of a good story, eh? And in this particular instance, the moment gamers stood up, literally in this case, because we had one guy at standing up and asking if Diablo Immortal was a belated April Fool's joke, he actually did that in the in the press conference, uh, which I thought was quite funny. But the minute he did that, the press circled the wagons and started firing off shots at gamers for being entitled crybabies, as usual, which is, you know, it's what we always see. And yes... The fact is, some are. There are some entitled crybabies out there who will moan and whine on about anything and everything. But the reality is that this is a false narrative. Statistics alone would tell you that a population the size we're talking about here can't be made up entirely of oversized children with an overdeveloped sense of their own importance. It simply can't be the case. And look, I'm I'm fully aware that anecdote isn't the same as evidence, but from my perspective, as an anecdote, if you like, most of the gamers I know are grown adults. Many of them have families, careers, and yeah, other interests outside of gaming. Surprise, surprise. But adults don't like to be treated like morons who will accept being spoon-fed shit, especially if they were promised a decent meal. The fact is, if you went into a restaurant for a decent burger and were instead presented with a shit sandwich, you too might be a bit miffed. And if you were then told that the normal chef had been replaced by a new guy who insisted on being paid more money every time you used the sauce or the condiments to cover up the bad taste and also expected you to thank him for the privilege, you might even start shouting that this was not what you wanted. Of course, if the local food critic got wind of this, he or she would most likely crucify the restaurant in a review. What they wouldn't do is put the word out that there was a whiny entitled customer complaining about the quality of a shit sandwich because it didn't happen to be the burger they were expecting. The food critic, we would hope at least, would understand that his or her duty was to the customer and not the burger joint. They would understand that their credibility would eventually start to suffer if they kept siding with the burger joint instead of taking on board the criticisms of the customers. We would hope. But we can't even hope that much with the gaming press. They seem so entirely enthralled or controlled by the games industry that they have very little credibility left in many instances. There are, of course, as always, exceptions. And the reality is that I doubt that most games journalists got into the industry to be little more than shills spewing out ad copy. But to us, to gamers, that's, that's what it appears to be. They appear to be people who will just say whatever the game industry wants them to say, rather than actually engaging their critical faculty and doing some bloody journalism for a change. And again... It may not even be the case that, that that's what they're doing. But from an outsider's perspective, that's how it looks. And, you know, you've got reality, you've got optics, and sometimes they're the same and sometimes they're different. But in this case, I, I don't know. I think, 
I think the optics, if you like, are exactly the same as what is actually going on. And I, 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 as I say, I might be wrong on that. But the perception needs to be altered. When outlet after outlet comes out to vilify people for voicing what in any other industry would be considered genuine concerns, well, then it becomes harder to draw any other conclusion, doesn't it? And that's what it feels like, to me at least. I mean, you can tell me in the comments what you think. Honestly, though, this can go on. While some gamers really do need to calm down and stop overreacting to every little thing that happens, I think there is a bigger problem. And that bigger problem isn't being addressed because the very people who would normally address it are part of the problem. Games journalism simply isn't fit for purpose at present. It's far too close and cosy with the industry it should be critiquing. And that means it's lost sight of its remit to serve the needs of the customer. That's why I rarely read magazines anymore. And it's also why I always wait to hear what actual gamers make of games. And it's also why I always try to read as many different sources whenever a news story breaks. Because you simply can't rely on you know, the journalists to give you the, the straight answer, to actually give you a balanced viewpoint. There always seems to be an agenda, and, and that's quite worrying. And, I, you know, I don't want to get into all this kind of fake news stuff, because like I said before, I, I don't think these journalists get into this to lie to us or to pull the wool over our eyes. I think, you know, they're often like us. They're gamers who want to talk about games, and they get into it for the right reasons. But I think this coziness between the industry and the press, well, it's not helping anybody at all, apart from maybe the industry itself, to sell us crap sometimes. But for whatever the reason, this can't go on. It shouldn't be like this. As a customer, I should be able to rely on journalists to do their jobs honestly and without compromise. If I can, I have to ask what purpose they serve. They're so out of step with the audience they're supposed to serve, well, that they've literally ceased to have any worth. The fact is that games companies have their own ad departments. They don't need games journalists to do that for them. So I suppose what I'm saying to games journalists is stop attacking those you serve and, well, do your damn job. Get a backbone for crying out loud. Perhaps then you might actually find that you regain some relevance and that gamers, the people who should be taking notice of you and should be trusting you, begin to do that again. Begin to actually take notice of what you're saying rather than shrugging and going, oh, they're attacking us again. Because that's how it feels. Oh, they're going after us again. Oh, they're, they're calling us a bunch of right-wing, knuckle-dragging, women-hating, gay-bashing idiots. And I like to think I'm none of those things, you know? And certainly a lot of the gamers I know are none of those things. And some of the gamers I know are women, and some of the gamers I know are gay. Believe it or not, we're a diverse bunch out here, you know? So try and take that on board. Try and listen to us. Try and actually hear what we're saying instead of jumping to the conclusion that we're all just going at it, that we're all a bit crazy, that we're all entitled idiots that think that we're owed a living. Because that's just not the truth. Not for most of us, at least, anyway. But anyway, look, you know, that, that's what I think about it. I do think there's a real problem here and I don't think it can continue. I don't, I don't think it's sustainable. I honestly don't think it is. Not if this industry is going to move forward with, with us all getting on. Maybe this is a small example of what's going on in the world generally, where everything's getting so polarised. And I, I, you know, I find that whole thing itself really worrying. But I don't want this kind of thing going on in, in a hobby that I do for fun, for crying out loud. Does it have to be like this? Oh, I don't know. 
But anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments. I've been going on far too long and it's time for you guys to let me know what you think. And, you know, whatever you think, if you want to hear more from me, don't forget to subscribe and please hit that bloody bell because you know what the problems are now with YouTube. You won't hear from me if you don't hit that bell. And then if you do, you might actually get my videos as they're uploaded. But as usual, in the meantime, I'm going to go and get myself a cup of tea. And uh, I will speak to you guys in the next one. <laughs> dear, oh dear. Bye.